All right, I lied. The last boat I'm gonna be in today. Jaguar. With the 400 Verado with electronic steering, which is, if the computers decide to kill us, and I guess they'll get me today. Man, that motor is so quiet, holy cow. This is a great big boat. Now, I didn't realize this, but we, we talked on the dock. We've been standing around waiting on boats all day. This boat has the same kind of depth to the front step that my Lynx does. So, it's a really big boat. Uh, Andrew and I were talking this morning. So, Andrew is 6'5", about 320. And he said, loaded with a 250, with the live wells full and him and another guy in it, he said it's a 65, 66 mile an hour bass boat. And I'll tell you right now, my Ranger with loaded tournament ready without a 300 pound guy in it, just with two normal size guys, was 65 to 68 miles an hour. So I'm gonna say this boat with a 250 is probably about Ranger fast. Now, a lot of guys who are running this boat are running 300 or 300 hours. But uh, I was just curious, it's such a big boat, such a big water boat. I want to take it out and take a spin. So uh, we're going to take it out. I'm not going to film a lot because I'm by myself, but I just want to take it out and take it, take it for a spin. Check it out. So that's really interesting. This is the boat that Rick made the comment that uh, it really ran well with the Verado on it. And I just, now granted, that's a lot of motor back there, but just touching the trim, coming around that corner, running back into the wind, I got a half a tank of fuel. Now I'm not sure, I am not sure if this is a single tank or two tanks. I don't know if I got a half a tank of fuel or a quarter of a tank of fuel. Let's take a look. Yeah, so let's let's just take a little quick peek look here. So, so really, what I've got is a quarter of a tank of fuel, but that boat was running 79 miles an hour, just with me in it by myself. Uh, again, it's empty, no power pole, but I mean, it just and it's a great big boat. I like this boat. I'm I'm now. I don't know that I'd like it going back to the speed I was going before because I've kind of gotten used to going faster, but uh, I'm pretty impressive. It's got a radio in it. Check it out.
Okay, I, I did not get a chance to fish out of the boat, but I, I got to spend that little bit of time in it. I moved around in it some on the water. It's a, it's a very stable boat. It's a surprisingly stable boat. It's 22 feet long, and I apologize. I know I continue to compare everything back to my Ranger, but that 521 is the boat I fished out of for several years. So it's four inches longer than the 521, but it's also four inches narrower. But I'll talk about that here in just a second. But I was just surprised what a stable boat it was. Um, and looking at, the, looking at the overhead pictures, the other thing that uh, kind of stands out to me, and I, I wish now I had measured it, and somebody probably can for me, but you'll notice that the, the width carries forward, the 94-inch beam carries way forward, almost all the way to those front boxes. So the boat just has a great big deck on it. And I'll also say I like the step setup on this boat a little better than I like my link setup step from the cockpit floor up to the actual fishing platform. So I think that's pretty cool. Uh, and it's also got, I've never seen this before, the boat's so big it's actually got a co-angler rod box, a seven-foot co-angler rod box. So let's break this down a little bit and let's just kind of go from the bow of the boat back. So you'll note that the boat, just like uh, I think every other of the Elite Series Bass Cats now, the big boats, they all have that movable uh, uh, foot uh, trolley motor. So as any of you guys who know Bass Cat guys, they all love, or most of them love being way, way forward in where they stand on a boat. I, because of stability and some other issues, like and or need to move that foot pedal back, which is what I've done in my boat. You see they've got the trim switches over there in a great place. It's got the, the trolling motor more down the center of the boat, very much like my Lynx boat. This looks just real similar to my Lynx boat uh, from an overhead standpoint and how it lays out. Okay, you know, there's just some cool stuff you can get in a boat this dadgum big. So you've got split boxes in the front uh, on either side, and what you'll see there is in between that little uh, that little latchy box. That is the more traditional net scabbard that you see in a lot of the bass cat boats. So two front boxes, and then the net scabbard in between them, and then behind that, uh, and I think there's a better view for you. I'll show you here in a minute. But those two boxes behind that actually have the scissors scissor lift things that your trays sit in and then there's even storage underneath those so there's a ton of storage there then you've got an ice box now you see at the bottom left of this picture there's one little cubby hole there that in all the pictures they show holding a helmet and i i carry a helmet especially in the winter time i love that idea that's a great idea and then you've got an eight and a half and a nine foot rod locker which again it's just something you can get away with in these massive boats and then on the, at the front of those, it's basically got a built-in day box on the front end of those rod boxes. So, again, 22-foot boat, you can get a whole lot of really cool stuff in it from a storage standpoint. Now, obviously, you've got to be careful not to carry everything in the kitchen sink. But uh, for those of us, those of you who like to carry a lot of stuff around, uh, this is a really cool boat. I thought I had a, a picture of this, so that's those back boxes and there you see those scissors where you can set four boxes on your side and then there's even storage underneath those so a lot a lot of storage room at the front end of this boat and a fair amount in the back end of the boat as well and then back into the cockpit now i've had a number of guys reach out that are big dudes and say you know what what boat would you recommend i and i basically so andrew the young man that's the sales guy there in uh Ross Motorsports in Lufkin. He is 6'5 or 6'6, six, six, and he's over three bills. And he, this is the boat he fishes out of. And he told me, he said, I'm about comfort as much as I am about speed. I fish big water, Rayburn and Toledo, and I wanted a boat that I was comfortable in the boat because of my size. And this is the boat that he fishes out of. So I would say to you that if you're a big dude and you fish big water, uh, this is a boat you really got to look at before you make a decision. Now remember, and, and I've now, so by the way, Ross has some good video on this boat as well. Andrew will tell you, tournament loaded, this is a 65 to 67 mile an hour boat, which is about the same speed my prior boat was. But if you want to go to a bigger motor, this boat is rated all the way up to a 450. You can make this boat fly as you've seen in my videos. And, and I got to say to you, 
going in the high 70s, low to mid 80s, in a 22 foot boat just feels a lot more comfortable to me than it does in a 20 foot boat. And that's not a knock on any other boat. It's just a bigger boat, a more comfortable boat, and feels more stable. So the other thing that is really neat about this boat is you see that walkway, which normally would be where a co-angler would lay his rods. And you can see there's a strap there for him. But that's actually a seven foot rod box as well, or maybe a seven and a half, but I believe it's a seven foot. I'll confirm that and make a note here. But that's a rod box for your co-angler, or I, I have seen a number of guys who don't do a lot of spinning rod fishing They'll store their spinning rods back there. So if you fish, fish with your spouse or fish with the same partner a lot and, you know, a lot of team stuff and you want to have another rod box, again, uh, a whole different spin on it, but this is a, a pretty cool boat for that purpose. Just a ton of storage, ton of leg room, ton of fishing room, a ton of places to store tackle and rods. And then the back deck set up, it looks to me like identically to the Lynx, same boxes, same live wells. Uh, the only difference I see is it appears back there. Uh, by the way, same removable back deck box lids uh, to get into your, uh, into, your, into your batteries or your bilge pumps or your fuel tanks or whatever you need to back there. It does appear, and I didn't notice this in the boat, but that sure looks on the port side in front of the ladder like a tool storage space. I believe that's what that is, which is kind of nifty. Uh, or, you know, for your transom saver or what else you store back there. So, uh, real similar setup in the back end to the Lynx. And then just kind of an overview of the boat. Um, there it is. That's the front end. And uh, obviously this is not the boat that we had out. This is from the, uh, from the Bass Cat website. But uh, it's, a, it's a really well laid out. And I, I got to tell you, um, now the boat we're looking at here is pictured with a 450R. If Major League Fishing, which of course is, is the uh, BFLs and the Toyota Series or whatever it's going to be called next year, if they, if they drop a horsepower limit, um, I will look at this boat next year as a potential boat to fish out of. I, I want to go over 70, uh, but if I, you know, it, the incremental price to go from a 250 to a 3 to a 350 is not that steep. Now, it's a little bit more expensive to go to the R's, but all of that stuff carries its resale pretty well. So I'm going to tell you next year if that changes, if the horsepower regulation lifts, uh, then this will be a boat I'll look at to consider next year. And that is not at all a dissatisfaction in my links. Um, but you cannot substitute for length of boat in big water. And if I could run a 22-foot boat and run mid to high 70 mile an hour, even with a bigger motor, and run all the tournaments that I want to run, uh, I, I would consider it. It's something I would look at. So... If you don't do a lot of tournament fishing, if you carry a heavy load, if you fish big water, if the tournaments you fish don't have a horsepower limit, or if you don't tournament fish and you just want to go fast, uh, I would have to tell you, before you buy a boat, you should go drive a jack. Uh, I'm really impressed. Now, again, it was with a supercharged 400 Verado, so it would flat fly, but it was a pleasure to drive, and uh, I think you should do yourself a favor. Before you make a decision on buying a great big boat, go drive this one. I uh, hope everybody enjoyed that. Uh, I enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed driving it. Uh, and I will be back next week with some fishing from, uh, from here in the Dallas area, actually. We'll see you guys soon.